Talked about like. Good evening, drama. everybody. Sorry, Mark, Mark's just sort of talking over this massive introduction. <laughs> I'm going to introduce. This is the first time we're on. Obviously, Wigan Fan TV. We're on Rugby League Hub, and for the first time ever, we're on North Korea State Television. Uh, <laughs> today after, after King Jong Un uh, basically has has a has a collection of one Wigan shirt in his museum. Joining me tonight. Stuart, wherever you are, you were logged in before, so we're still waiting for for Stuart Minnis, who's supposed to be logged in. I saw him on the screen; he's now disappeared, and I can see that he's he's sending me messages. I can't reply, Stuart, but whatever he did before, that was the right thing to get on the screen. <laughs> so hopefully, he he does exist. Um, so joining me tonight, we've got Mark in the middle of your screen from from Super League. Hello. Cards, we'll be catching up in in just a moment, um, and then at the end of the screen uh, is Matthew Mellon, who many of you will remember. We did a quick video earlier on in the year. So Matthew is known as the Wigan runner, uh, who yep. is basically Wigan's version of Forrest Gump, even though he's never seen <laughs> Forrest Gump. Uh, did you catch up on the plane with Forrest Gump by any chance? I, I didn't. I've still not seen the film, believe it or not. But I do intend to watch it sooner or later. <laughs> It's incredible. Your life is basically Forrest Gump. I mean, well, maybe not your life. I mean, not not to spoil the film <laughs> for you, but you'd have to be pretty impressive if your whole life was uh, was like Forrest Gump. Matthew, we want to catch up with you because there's two key things. Obviously, well, three key things. You're obviously a big Wigan fan. Um, one of the big things, though, is obviously before we last time we spoke, you were on about to go over to to New York, if I remember rightly, with the dodgeball yeah. team. And I think the guys did pretty well, if, if by all accounts. Do you want to sort of bring us up to date with, with how that trip went and how, how the guys did? Yeah, thanks, Sean. So, yeah, they did really well. Um, so the last time we spoke, I think, was in um, the middle to the end of July. And yeah. the Dodgeball World Cup, uh, which my team, the Wigan Dodgeball Warriors, qualified from, um, took place at Madison Square Garden on the first weekend of August. Um, so we got to the final. They actually got to the final. We wow. beat them by a team from New York, a local team, which are the best junior team in America. We I can't tell you how close we got to winning. We were literally 30 seconds away. It was like one of those endings where you get beaten by a drop goal in a rugby league match. You know, it's it funny because it was actually a decision that went against us. And my instant reaction was, I went to the referee and did this. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot we don't have a video referee yet in dodgeball. But um, yeah, we were so close to winning. And um, if anyone out there has not seen the, the, the match and they want to, it's available on my page on the Wigan Runner, also on the Wigan YouTube page as well. And it, it was a brilliant spectacle. The children really enjoyed it. The families it came as well. Everyone had a great time, and we definitely put Wigan on the map as well. Uh, Stu, I can see you. I'm going to bring you onto the screen in just a minute. Stay where you are. Do not press a single button. <laughs> That's not to say that we can hear you in a second, but I'm going to bring you on the screen once once we just catch up with Matthew. And then, I mean, I'm building it up massively, so you better have some good stories <laughs> for us, Stu. Uh, the, the other big – so you, you obviously came close to, to winning, Matthew. Um which is incredible in itself to think that a team from Wigan Youth Zone have gone over to the other side of the world, challenged the best in the world, beaten the vast majority yeah. of them, and Robert Hicks was refereeing and sort of given a dodgy decision and you've lost. But <laughs> the, the other the other big news, here we go, Tony Pete said exactly the same, ref wasn't Hicks, was it? Um, the big news that, that came today, though, Matthew, do you want to, uh, you might be a little bit embarrassed to talk about this, but I saw you've been, uh, you've been nominated for, for an award as, uh, is it Sports Coach of the Year? Yeah, I have, yeah, I'm, I'm Im immensely proud of it as well. Um, so you should be, incredible. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. Sure. Um, so I've been um, nominated for a Coach of the Year Award in Wigan. Um, Sports Achiever of the Award, uh, Sports Achiever of the Year Award as well through my running for charity, and also Wigan Dodgeball Warriors have been nominated for Club of the Year in Wigan as well. I'm probably most proud about that part to be honest because yeah. they've worked a lot harder than I have to get to that from what they did this year. And for, for me, obviously, it's very um, it's very proud to see them, you know, and that them get recognised as well, especially in the hometown being so young. Because yeah. a year or two ago, no one really knew about the dodgeball team. And it's only been the last 12 months since we fundraised and all of Wigan came together um, that people now know about how hard they've been training and how far they've come so far. So, yeah, it's, it's, I'm immensely proud and honoured to have been nominated on my team as well. I'm going to bring Stu, this is the big build-up. I'm going to bring Stu on screen. Stu, get ready. 
you're about to be introduced to the world. We're about to unleash Stu on the world. I'm just going to bring Stu on, and I'm going to come back to you, Matthew, just to wrap up um, with you, and then we'll start talking about Wigan things, um, about the, the competition that you'll be running next week. But I'm just going to bring Stu onto the screen. Uh, the big, uh, here we go. Stu, can oh, you hear going. me? Yeah. Can and we can hear you. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So, world, this is Stuart Minnis, the one and only Stuart Minnis, who is basically, like I said last week, if Wigan Fan TV had a fan TV for Wigan <laughs> Fan TV, Stu would be the man. So, Stu, I'll come to you in, in just a second. We'll, yeah, we'll no have a good catch-up. Yeah. Yeah, um, but back over to you, Matthew. In terms of, um, there we go, Matt's there, it's Stu. We've finally <laughs> seen him. Um, Matthew, do you want to just um, tell us, I know we mentioned your competitions last time you're on the show, but you've got one next week um, with, with Total Fitness. So do you want to just tell everybody that's watching how they can win uh, tickets next week? Yeah, so on the Wigan Runner Facebook and Twitter pages, I'll have two competitions next week for the last, shall we say, two parades game of the season against Hull. Um, the first one will be a, a like and share competition uh, to have a chance of winning two tickets. And I'll also be running a Find Me First competition next week, uh, where the first fan to find me on the live feed will actually win two tickets as well uh, to the game. So, yeah, so there's going to be four tickets up for grabs next week in those competitions. Perfect. And, and for anybody that doesn't know, Find My Face is basically you, you can't be in a car, you have to be on foot, not, not necessarily running, but when uh, <laughs> when Matthew's out and about running with his camera, you've got to recognise where he is in Wigan uh, and ideally running up to him and um, and you've got to say whatever the phrase is that, that Matthew says. Um, and just before we start talking about Wigan things, how many days are you up to now running in a row? So I just ran um, to the DW Stadium and back uh, just before before this. So that was 626 today. Wow. Um, I've, run I've got a bit of a back problem I've had since yesterday, but it's not stopped me. So, uh, yeah, we're still going. And, yeah, all the support that's keeping me going every day is fantastic. Um, yeah, so thanks to everybody, all the followers, all the, all the people that comment every day. I really appreciate it. Well, Matthew, well, well, I think you're really inspiring. I, I tried to do what you do <laughs> about a year ago, start of October. I got eight days in, pulled my calf, and I didn't run for nearly a year. So I think what you do is incredible, mate. Thank you. appreciate it. Well, I can imagine after eight days, because you've still got your muscle memory that you're trying to work on there. So I can imagine how bad that was early, do to, to uh, pull your calf. But you've got to start to, uh, to go, haven't you? So start again. I'm, I'm doing a similar yeah. record to Matthew as well. I, I did the Great North oh, Run two years ago, so I'm up to about 670 days since running. Um, <laughs> so so that, that's, that's my impressive well, Thank, Thank you. Proud of you too. So, right, let's talk. Let's get on. So, if you see Matthew disappear from the screen at any point, he's probably gone for a run, but you can't stay on with us for the for the full show. But, Matthew, if whenever you need to go, just go. Don't worry about it. Let's start talking about some rugby stuff. Um, Mark, I know you've been on screen longest, but we've got to go to Stu first, haven't we? Yeah, yes, of right? course we do. Stag, 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 stag. So, <laughs> Stu, um, the, the famous yeah. Stu. Uh, do you want to give, give us a little bit of an introduction in terms of you obviously live in Maryport, so what yeah, got you into yeah. what got you into supporting Wigan however many years ago it was? Um basically when obviously Anley and the Clang and all them were playing. Um obviously, you know, there was only the one thing before the Super League era. So many moons ago when it was Mr. Iro, Mr. Ellie Anley and all the clang, you know what I mean? So back then, another Not a bad time. Back is, I- not a bad time to start uh, start supporting Wigan then. And one of the one of the big things that you you've been desperate to come on because you get married in a couple of a couple of days, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah Friday, yeah, the big day, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've got a confession to make, which Stuart sent me a message today, and I'm very embarrassed about this. So I, I sent I sent Stuart and Sharon, his fiance, a, a card, and it was addressed to to Stuart and Sharon on the envelope, but in the card it said to Stuart and Karen. <laughs> 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 yeah, Which... but, uh, the, when the good lady comes from work and she really, she found it highly amusing. So, so you, you're quite uh, safe there, Sean. Honestly, mate, I'm not entirely sure how <laughs> I did that to be honest with you. But welcome on board, Stu. Yeah, uh, cheers, uh, good, good to have two new faces really on Wigan Fan TV, and over to an old face. If that's uh, if that's all right to call you old, an old face, Mark. How are you doing? I feel old thanks to you, Sean. Oh, <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Yeah. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about Super League Pod this week before we move on to, to the Huddersfield and the Warrington games? Yeah, so obviously last week was the big 
uh, vote, wasn't it? The EGM and um, our club got what our chairman wanted from that. And there's been a lot of fallout from that around sort of the rugby league world and being a fan led show. We wanted to get loads of fans views in to voice their opinion. Most people's opinion was it's, it's all right. It's better than what we've got yeah. now, but why are we, why aren't we going further with 14 teams and getting rid of these repeat mm. loop fixtures and that sort of stuff. So we talked through all of that. We had a little bit of a dig at some of the uh, championship chairman who all of a sudden think they're the moral guardians of the sport, yet are quite happy to throw threats around at people and want to expose people for why they voted and stuff doesn't seem very fair or high yeah. moral high ground behaviour to me. So we kind of talked about that sort of stuff. And then we went through the games like we normally do with loads of fan views. I know a couple of people who watch this show got in touch with fan views. Um, we always welcome those. We want to share as many views make us not hate all the other fans of all the other teams because we all we all hate the referees together basically (laughs) and martin puts a comment on here so that that's why the huddersfield game was changed then for stew's wedding so there you go Stu. i think it actually was wasn't it yeah 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 before we lose before we lose matthew sorry uh before we lose matthew before he goes i just want to ask him a, a quick question about um about rugby rather than talking about running and dodgeball. It's a very multicultural sport, it's a cultural show tonight, dodgeball and, and running. Um, you, you thought, so, I mean, you obviously you go to as many Wigan games as you can. I know you've been out of the country um, over the past few weeks doing, doing various things, but Wigan have pretty much they've won every game in the Super 8 so far, if I'm right, Mark. I think I'm right with that, Anna. Yes, we have. Yeah, we have. Yeah. We've won so, uh, seven in a row. Yeah. Two Six games row. left, two games left in, until, uh, until the semi finals. Last time we spoke, I think we'd just gone through a, a bit of a tricky patch. But your thoughts, um, Matthew, on on how you ex- do you, did you expect Wigan to make it to the grand final? Your, your thoughts on how they're playing at, at this moment in time? Um, yeah, obviously I hope so. Uh, I do think they will. Uh, the, the difficult thing is with the Super Eight. It's 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 obviously good for the team to generate this momentum that we have done now. But did you notice how St Helens celebrated when they won the League Leader Shield last weekend. Or didn't they, celebrate. They, they, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, they didn't, did they? They were so reserved about it. And I think that speaks volumes for, you know, where the focus actually is. It's the Super 8s really, you've got to get your position so you get a home draw ideally, but it's about not getting injured and not using too much emotion and kind of yeah. keeping your cards close to your chest because, at the end of the day, it comes down to finding a way to win in those 80 minutes in the semi-finals and then the grand final, isn't it? So, like the game against Warrington, we won well. Obviously, Warrington played, you know, not a full-strength team, but I think it's important to keep the momentum, but also play, also keep those main cards close to your chest until it really matters, which is going to be our semi-final match, isn't it? And yeah. hope with a sport like Wigan at the DW, you know, it makes a massive difference. It's like having one or two extra players on the pitch, isn't it? So I do think we'll get to the grand final. I do hope it's Wigan versus St. Helens. I feel like Castleford yeah. have got a bit of a chip on the I've goal. sleepless right. nights already at the thought of that. <laughs> it's what, sorry? I'm having sleepless nights already at the thought of playing St. Helens in the grand no, final. That's the baby, Sean. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Um, but yeah, they're on the right track, aren't they? And you just touched on it there. The Warrington game. The Warrington game seemed a strange one because, like you say, Warrington were missing a few players. Wigan were missing a few players. It's all about building momentum. Shu, you you were at the game, if I remember rightly, weren't you? The last game, no, 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 oh. game, no. Are you not? The uh, Wakefield game, no, 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 no. Well, are you, I assume you've watched the Warrington game. You, you, your yeah, thoughts yeah, on yeah, that, particularly, it, yeah. you know, uh, Mister Manfredi coming back and scoring two tries as well. How, yeah, how yeah, pleased think, for him were you? Yeah, to be honest with you, I think for his first game back, it was like a new player coming in. Um, brilliant. Um, hit the straps. His second try when he just put shot his arm out like an octopus was dead funny. He's just like, <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> Shot his arm out like an octopus. Has Matt been feeding you lines? <laughs> I think I've got a feeling that you and Matt might have sort of set up a bingo card before you came on air. Um, just um, no comment. Okay, no problem. <laughs> Mark, your, your thoughts on, on the Warrington game? I, I was a bit underwhelmed by the whole game. I, I watched I watched the reaction on Red V TV that Matt, uh, that Matt sent through, and they were too busy concerned about talking about how good the Wigan Warrington game was on the street. The, 
on the screens. And I, I just thought it was a bit underwhelming. Um, I, I thought the first 15 minutes or so were like great intensity from both sides. And then the side, both sides kind of started to make a few mistakes at the, at the start. It was like the attack wasn't, the attacks weren't doing out because the defenses were so great. Then it kind of became the, the halves from both sides or, or and the fullbacks as well, but like little mistakes creeping in, passing movements, not quite coming off. But, um, the, the thing that mo- at this time of the year, you need to have a couple of good things. You need to start showing that you've got a good kicking game. You need to have really resolute defence and you need to be able to turn it on at, at the crucial moments in the game. And Warrington couldn't do that against us and we could do it against them. Like when we got the extra man, we absolutely tore them to pieces. When they got the extra man, they basically had that one kick and were we scared of them? So I was really impressed with us from that point of view. Most grand finals aren't like 36 points to 30 and that sort of stuff. Most of them are relatively close games, the best defensive side, the best kicking game that tends to win. Um, so I'm looking forward that way rather than thinking I wasn't quite thrilled that we didn't score 35 points, 30 odd points or what have you. Yeah, I, I suppose it, that, basically. Yeah, I, I just I just felt up at... I get what you say about the defences on top, and, and I think that's that's perhaps a little bit of naivety from me as a fan. I, I want it, you know, I don't want to see the defences on top, or apart from Wigan's defence, you know. Um, I think it, just, it was great that we've defended so well without Ben Flower on as well. He's been really crucial yeah. to our, our defence yeah. this year. So I think Club and Navarrete deserve a lot of credit for the way oh, no, they played in the game, and um, and Sutton as well. Sutton made over forty tackles in the game and scored a try. So I think our middles were really, really strong. The um, I don't know if you heard Stu there. It's obviously Matt in disguise because as soon as you mentioned Navarrete's name, he got a little bit excited. <laughs> you, honestly, I, I bet there's a message going between them two right now about all these things. I've playing. never seen him in the same place at the same time, Sean. I'm not sure that. <laughs> no, I have. I have. Oh. I definitely have. Um, but yeah, yeah. I think that's a good. Obviously, Ben Flowers missing this week as as well. Sean O'Loughlin. Matthew, would you would you like to see with, with two games left? You've in effect, like we say, you're in a semi final. You need to in one game really to to ensure that you've got a home semi final. We're pretty much there, not quite there. Would you like to see Wigan change the side around a little bit to to rest players, or, or is it all about building momentum now for for that semi final? Well, it's obviously it's about keeping this momentum that we've got now. But you don't want to change the winning formula. I do believe in if, if it works, don't change it. So yeah. we want to keep things the same. But obviously, all Lachlan's definitely going to come back in, isn't he, in the semi-final. And we need to protect him the way it's obviously been done. And he lifts us. I think he'll, he lifts the team minimum of 5% every time he's even on the pitch, even if he's not on the ball. So um, when he comes back in at the semis, I think, obviously, we'll play even better then. Yeah, uh, fingers crossed as it is, but I, you've got to say we've been the best team, haven't we, in the Super Eight so far, undefeated. So yeah, we're people at the right time. Yeah, shut them out. Yeah, yeah. The big news this week before we before we preview the Huddersfield game, the, the breaking news, the, the best news I think that I've heard in a, a long, long time was was the fact that the North Korean dictator is in fact a Wigan fan. Uh, it's the greatest. Don't shake your head. It is the the best news ever. I know I've got a little bit giddy with it and I got a little bit carried away. And I've bought you like a shirt. it because you can do all your little pictures and stuff. I think, yeah, we, is it really the company we want to keep? I think it's fine. <laughs> of, of all the dictators that you want, it's sort of the friendly, cuddly one, isn't he? You don't, you know, if, if it comes out that, if it comes out that, we don't get to see how many people he's killed because we don't get to get cameras into his country. <laughs> but, it, but if it came out that Hitler was a Saints fan, you know, it's like. You know, well, Mussolini was a Warrington fan. You'd rather have <laughs> of all of them. You'd rather have King John. Like, I, I, I think I'm right. Which team? Which team does Donald Trump support? That is the worrying thing. Well, I did a, I did do a picture <laughs> with Mate Wigan Great again on his hat. So I, I think Donald Trump and King John Un are both Wigan fans, and I feel like one may have influenced the other into in supporting Wigan. I think when they actually met, they were they were discussing you know the game the week before. I mean, that, was a dodgy, that was a dodgy yeah, thing that looked more like Simon Orton than Donald Trump, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> he did actually look like Simon Orton. But I mean, like, we have to address this news. Like, have you ever, as a Wigan fan, uh, Stu, experienced anything more bizarre than learning that Kim Jong Un has a Wigan shirt in his museum? No, definitely not. Definitely not. No, no, definitely not. 
I'm I'm not I'm not too sure what Matt saw in the urinals in the West End. He's just um, put a comment it, on. He saw he saw he saw Stu and Matt together in the urinals in the West End. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Uh, I hope he's watching on a delay because if he saw Hitler Mussolini again <laughs> in the urinals in the West End, they've got a bit of a problem. I mean, the attendances have been down. I don't think we've been sort of uh, digging up uh, dead dictators, Matt. But uh, Mark, bizarre. How how good? About, like I say, of all the dictators, I think it's I think it's ridiculous. It's it's Why? it's so ridiculous. But it, it 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 did get our you know our club name in big mm. you know coverage over the weekend. So that and it got our sports some coverage and stuff. So no publicity is bad publicity, I suppose. I don't know why you're so excited about it. The guy is <laughs> you know renowned as a pretty as having a pretty shitty human rights <laughs> record. <laughs> I just don't get it. But any publicity is good publicity, Sean. I agree. I agree on that that front. <laughs> Matt says Trump was in the cubicle. There's been many a Trump in a cubicle, Matt. We, we know that. I know that where, you, where you're leading to with that. Um, strangely, I'd rather talk about even though it's bad news. I'd rather talk about Willie Iser and then about his se- the great season he's had, not missing a game until he's got an injury. <laughs> I, 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 nice segue, <laughs> cubicle to Willie. I like it. Um, but I want to ask Matthew one thing. One one of the ways that you can get into North Korea is by doing the North Korean marathon. Have you, yeah. ever considered, have you ever considered doing that? It's funny you say that because I actually planned to do that um, early this year. Uh, I think it was in May, wasn't it? That was the plan to actually uh, fundraise uh, for the, uh, dodgeball, the dodgeball team to go to New York. But in the end, we decided not to do that because there was some tension between uh, the two leaders. I think back in February, was it? Something like that. So yeah. I'm actually planning to do it next year. Fingers well, crossed. You, wow. you know that you, there's going to be no hesitation in getting it. I mean, you won't even need to go to Beijing to pick up your uh, the visa like you have to do to get into North Korea. Just say you're from Wigan. He's a massive Wigan fan. Mm-hmm. You, yeah. You'll get to see places of North Korea that tourists have not seen. That's the plan. That's the plan. Um, it'd be good if you could give us some tickets for an event in North Korea and we'll have a competition for those as well. We'll get people <laughs> but, uh, not sure that would be as easy as going to the DW, but we'll try. I mean, I have been, I have got very carried away with it. I did the Wigan team, uh, the nineteen man squad today, all with all with his haircut. Uh, it's frightening how much John Bateman and Oliver Partington look like they could just belong in North Korea with that haircut. I even have my haircut done like him as well. Uh, I have got a little You're bit carried away. It. Yeah, I it. just just you know, when was the last time? I've I did never seen you so excited. Gun, yeah. I'm having a baby. That's going to be all right. But King John has got a Wigan shirt. This is amazing. <laughs> it is. It's absolutely incredible. I've not slept for days just thinking about you know, who who's his favourite player. Uh, but anyway, Maybe the lack of sleep is what's going to your head, mate. <laughs> Peter's got a fantastic idea. Magic weekend in North Korea, 2020. Yeah, I'm all I'm all up for that. Yeah, instead of the fireworks when the players come out, they can set off rockets, <laughs> can't they? <laughs> Maybe we could send him an invite to come on the show. Maybe he'd accept. I like it. There is a there's some like Spanish guy, isn't? It? I'm, I'm obsessed with North Korea, but there is there's like a Spanish guy who's like the only European who's like can get into North in and out of North Korea. Is best. So I'll, I'll try. I'm sure he's on Facebook somewhere. I'll find him. We'll get. We'll get, get Dennis it. Rodman on as well. He's big mates with. Uh, yeah, he is, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Uh, honestly, th- this time next year we'll be live from North Korea. Um, right, let, let's talk a little bit about rugby. Let's let's talk about um, what Mark just mentioned. Willie Iser out for the year. Stu, I, I last week I said although he won't be in the dream team, I think Willie Iser was in my dream team because he's a seven out of ten at least at every single week, isn't he? How gutted are you for Willie Iser that he's going to miss the rest of the season, having played pretty much every game? I think Mark might Mark might correct me on that, but I don't think he's missed a game this season. No. Nope. No, no, it's a bit uh, unfair, really, isn't it? You know what I mean? He's always put it in, it's defence or whatever, and he's missed the That's definitely game. Matt. That is definitely Matt. With, uh, okay, that, that was missed by everybody, but... What, the Matt, put it in? I heard yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Honestly, <laughs> Matt, I'm sure Matt's in his house. No, I can assure you, there's just me, Shadden and the dog, I can assure you, honestly. Yeah. What's the dog's name? Sorry. Okay. Uh, sorry, Is carry on. going to be at the wedding? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
Shadow wanted it to be a ring bow there, but uh, let's just say, uh, no, it wasn't for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Stu, go on. We're talking about Willie Icey. Yeah, Willie Icey, yeah, I've got to be sidetracked there. Yeah, he's, um, he's always been there, hasn't he? You know, he's always helped out in that. Um, yeah. You know, he's always, since he come from witness, he's just got more and more. Um, he's more of, how can I put it, he's one of these, like a rugged player. Always takes the yards up, nothing flash, you know, and he's always there to defend his line, whatever. So, but the guy reminds me a bit like Sam Panapa, really. Like he's kind of more like Sam Panapa was back in the day. You know what I mean? That kind of modular. He'll do a job and he won't moan about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Willie Ice has played, you know, centre. He's played in the middles. He's played second row everywhere. As a as a sportsman, how gutted must he be? The fact that he's contributed. Every single game this season, and he might miss out on on that old. But how you know it's a big sacrifice. I'm calling you a professional sportsman because I, I guess that's that is pretty much what you are, Matthew. How gutted would you be if you trained all year to do the London Marathon, then day before you pick up an injury? I guess it's a similar similar thing. Well, absolutely. Like you said, he was always a minimum of seven eight to ten every week. But he was always consistent and reliable. So. You've just got to see. You've got to try and see the bigger picture and think about next season, haven't you? And get um, get over the injury, get better as soon as you can, and plan ahead. But it's easier said than done, isn't it? Because all year he's been, even though he's worked so hard and done so well, he's going to try and peak at this part of the year, isn't he? Yeah. Um, you've just got to wish him all the best and hope he'll come back stronger from it. And he, he was rewarded early in the season, obviously, with, with a new contract. Yeah. Mark, I, I know uh, we were talking to David um, earlier um, off air, and he said the, one of the, if there was a place to lose a player in this Wigan team, it would be second row. How do you see now, moving forward, with Farrell potentially coming back next week, how do you see the right edge and your golden left edge working? Well, I, well, I mean, that's going to be tricky, isn't it? Are we... <laughs> Who do, Sorry, we, who do we plug in and, on the golden edge? Because Greenwood's been really struck up a great partnership with with Williams straight away. And um, and to be honest, we've all really talked about the positives of Willie I. So one of the things that maybe hasn't been his strength is he hasn't quite found that connection with his halfbacks. He's really worked hard in defence. He's really bailed his teammates out when it comes to the defensive side of things. But um, a few times he doesn't take the right lines or he gets in the way a little bit. Farrell and Greenwood, both of them don't do that. So we've got an opportunity for more strike in that second row. And I think that's that's really exciting. Um, I really hope Farrell gets to have a game before the semi-final. Um, that, yeah. would, that would be outstanding. And then our best player, arguably the best player in Super League this year, is also in, in the second row. So I think David's point that he made to us off air was, was a very good one, that we're basically talking about, if Farrell's fit enough, three of the best, what, five, six second rowers yeah. in the competition are all in our side. Um, so so I, I'm not too concerned. I'm just a bit gutted for Willie because he missed out, didn't he, a couple of years ago in the World Club Challenge game as well. Um, yeah, he was, he was, he was he the kind of drops, drums, wasn't unlucky, he? Yeah, an unlucky member of the squad in certain senses, especially because he, like I say, bails his teammates out so much defensively. Stu, looking ahead to, to Thursday night, a Thursday night game against a team that doesn't have the best record in terms of capacities, uh, on a Thursday night against Wigan, yeah, obviously we're expecting a very, very low crowd there. We're going to announce the squad. Josh Woods comes back into the squad um, and Joe Greenwood comes back into the squad um, after being suspended for that one game. What are you hoping to see from Wigan on Thursday? Bearing in mind that Huddersfield season is now over, but this is their last home game of the season. Um, do you expect a sort of a, a fired up Huddersfield for one last hurrah or do you expect Wigan to, to over... Um, to turn them over at their ground? I think it would be a very, very spirited Huddersfield team. They want to, how can I put it, it's the old Yorkshire and Lancashire thing in it, you know what I mean? They don't want to, even though they want to admit it, they want to help Tigers, who are basically mm-hmm. creeping up right back behind us. So, yeah. I think we'll sneak it, I think we'll sneak it. Uh, different lot, not a Navarrete drop goal, as somebody would say, <laughs> who's not online tonight. But um, I think with Josh Woods in the squad, you know what I mean? It's a good thing because obviously Sam would uh, would be the thing for the drop goal. So it's just to see what team he goes for. Well, well what bench he goes mm. for. And it was, you know what I mean? So yeah, absolutely. Escarine. Personally, I, last week when he came off the bench, Escarine, honest to God, 
it was just like Kay's animal. I think he was wanting to show up, you know what I mean? Okay, the work had been done. There were tired bodies and that. But it was just the last 10 minutes, he was, you know, everywhere. Yeah. It was interesting last week when we brought Escare on. We had Tomkins, Escare, Sam Powell, Luluai and Williams all on the pitch at the same time. I don't think yeah, I've yeah, seen yeah. that yeah. happen. Obviously, yeah. the extra man helped with, with that. But that, that gave Escare a huge amount of freedom because there were so many people to pass him the ball. Yeah. Matthew, what's your? Th- I'm going to ask Mark the same question in a second as well. I'm interested to get your thoughts. Well, Matthew, your thoughts on Escaray? We, we've had plenty of conversation during the year about he's underutilized. He, you know, he should be starting. He shouldn't be starting. How do? You, where do you view Escaray long term? I, I personally, I think Wayne at this moment in time has got it right. He used him in the last 15 minutes against tired bodies. Do you see that, or, or would you like to see him much earlier in the game? We saw him play the full game against Saint Helens. He was equally as devastating. Interested to see how you would like to see um, Escaré used, Matthew. Yeah, I think that's he has used him in the last 15, 20 minutes of games against tired legs recently, and it's worked every time he's used him. I can't recall him, him having a bad game this season. He's always done the job that he goes out on the pitch to do. I yeah. think he, he's obviously been unlucky in recent seasons with Tompkins and the role that he's had to play with him. But next season... He, you know, he's going to have a, a bit more of a free realm on on the pitch. I think I think he's a brilliant player. He's definitely underutilized. Um, but again, I think he's a prime example of a, of a player that can keep his cards close to his chest until it really matters in the playoffs. I think we might see a few a few special moments, shall we say? Or ho- I yeah. hope we do away in the playoffs. Tommy. Mark, I know you just mentioned Morgan Escray, but do you think he's being utilised the most in the most effective way that you possibly can in this moment in time, bringing him on as almost as late as you possibly can for him to have an impact? I think Sam Tompkins has been utilised in the best way he possibly can be utilised because he's the best fullback at the club. So that's that's what the conversation should have been all year. Escray, though, like like Matt said, been brilliant when he's come on when he's when he's. It, injected pace into the game he is exciting you, i think it's hard to think of him having a bad game similarly i'm struggling to think of him having too many great games but i can think of amazing moments in games that he's given us yeah. this year and i can also think of times where i've really shook my head at him in a few games this year so, so that's what you get from from escrow it's about using him so that you minimize the chance for him to have his defensive clangers but you maximize the chance of his his impact and that yeah. I think Matt I'm really excited about what Matt was saying about putting him in in the playoffs in these key yeah. moments and something happening because I I can I can see that too I'm really excited um just not to take things off on a tangent again but just to just to say hello to all of our viewers over in North Korea and um, we I have prepared this on the screen that that does say Huddersfield versus Wigan in Korean it's four o'clock in the morning in North Korea and we've not had many comments in the comments section from from the avid um, North Korean fans um but I just assume when we pre- play this later at yeah, a more suitable time the that, that's when they'll come that's when they'll come through so so um However, you say hello in Korean. I probably should have learned that uh, before coming on to the show. But um, right, predictions. Uh, Matthew, I'll start with you. How do you see Thursday night going? Huddersfield against Wigan. Score prediction, please. Yeah, I think you were saying before, I think they're going to try and win the game, aren't they? The old Yorkshire Wigan thing. They're going to try and help Castleford. I, I think they could go ahead early doors and get tired legs. I think we're going to win 20 points to 16. 20 points, 16. First try scorer from you, Matthew. I'm not, I'm, I don't know why I'm asking you. I started asking people at the start of the season, then I forgot, but now I've remembered. <laughs> and I won't remember on the night of the game what you said. But who do you think will score the first try? I'm going to go for Tom Davis. I think he's been brilliant recently. Yeah. And hopefully, he can benefit from playing on the left hand side, which me and, Mark have, <laughs> we, me and Mark have been talking about extensively. Um, Stu. Your thoughts on uh, can I have a score from you? And if you do say a Roman Navarrete drop goal, I'm pressing the button here that pretty much says eject. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, you thought um, your score prediction and first try scorer? 25 uh, 18 plus. Um, <laughs> and I think first try scorer, Oliver Gilda. Oliver Gilda, okay. And who's scoring that drop goal that you've just put in there? Uh, well, the Samuel Escalier. You've been sensible, Stu. It's like you're scared of me. Mark, uh, score prediction from from yourself, first try scorer. Uh, Gildart, by the way, 
swapped over to the right hand centre seamlessly. He was fantastic, weren't yeah. he? I think that's a good shout because you'll, we'll be playing up against their young wing um, on on their left edge. They'll probably have one of the senior twins and Wardle, who looks really talented, but is is a kid. Um, so so that's not a bad shout, uh, Gildar or Manfredi. I'd I'd probably plump for Joe Greenwood first try and I can't remember what I said on the Super League part about what the score's <laughs> going to be. It's going to be Wigan by about three or four scores. I think we'll we'll run away with it in the end. I mean, if you watched Huddersfield last week, yeah, they gave up after, after an hour mm. um, and I think probably that's kind of going to be how they roll through the rest of the season. Um, if we can if we can stay tough for, for an hour, we should get a bit of a free reign at the end. So let's say 30 points to 12 or something like that. Okay, um, I'll go 28-4, first Ooh. try scorer. Ooh, difficult one, isn't it? It's not really difficult, but uh, Gabe Hamlin, I think. Who's, uh... Navarrete, <laughs> let's get him off the nudie run. I know Matt's No, because no, of what you said last week. No, we've got to have Matt doing that, Sean. It's, it's, it's got to be done, eh, for, for John and Jack. It's got to be done. Whatever you've done, Jack. Come on. Yeah, just to bring you up to date, Matthew, uh, Stu was watching last week. So, so Matthew comes on as a bit of an obsession with Navarrete. So much so that like, he's actually stolen one of Navarrete's shirts um, and hasn't washed it. It's actually a match worn shirt that he hasn't washed. Um, <laughs> but he hasn't scored yet. So typically, obviously, when somebody doesn't score for the season, they've got to do the, the nude run. And uh, Stu you. suggested uh, last week that Matt does that with him for charity. And so we're actually hoping that he doesn't score now. Uh, and uh, I'm sure we can. Uh, I'm sure we can make that make that happen. Um, I'm going to give. We'll go back round and, and sort of get, get a last word from everybody. But somebody's put a comment here, and Mark, I'm interested to get your thoughts on this and sort of pay a little bit of a of a tribute to to this man, Tommy Luluai as Andrew says here, is in line to make his 250th appearance with, and obviously in two spells. He's best, best out of the two seasons he's had since returning this year. But I, I haven't asked you to prepare this, but a little bit of a tribute um, to, to Tommy to Tommy Lulawai. Well, he won the Harry Sunderland Trophy in pro, a lot of ours, especially younger Wigan Warriors fans' favourite Wigan game, the 2010 yeah. Grand Final. So, um, so that's that's the enough tribute for him as it matters. But I, I remember him coming from London, a real. Raw kid, lots of talent, really good short kicking game, um, and then yeah, now he's, he's matured a bit. He, he organises things um, a little bit more now. He, he's switching between nine and and seven, and probably timing it up right. The switch this year, last year he got a bit stale yeah. at seven as the year went on. This year, moving him into it later on means he's fresh. There is it's kind of a different proposition for people to look at. But the thing that I'll always think about with Tommy Lulawai, what we call him in in our house, is Big Tommy because of those <laughs> granite shoulders that he hits with. I mean, no one hits bigger than Tommy Lulawai, do they? That's the biggest uh, praise there we I can go. give for him. Fasavalu, end of story. The best tackle <laughs> I've ever seen on a rugby pitch. Tommy Lulawai on Fasavalu. Um, thank you very much, Mark. Um, Super League Pod is available to download. Um, it's on his T-shirt. Uh, and it's basically a rant I'm about the, the Look, I'm, Super I'm well League branded. EGP. Oh, I need some more branding. It's not big enough, this. Um <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matthew, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Congratulations again on, on being nominated for, for the number of awards that, that you have thank done. You. And if people go and find, he's tagged into to this video, so like uh, Matthew's page, The Wigan Runner, uh, and get yourself in with a chance of winning some tickets for the Wigan Hull game next week. Stu, thank you so much for finally coming on the show. We finally yeah, got some technology sure. up to Maryport, which is yeah, which is nice yeah. to see. Uh, spreading the word of, of yeah. Wigan and technology to Cumbria mm-hmm. is what this show is all about. <laughs> a bit harsh. Um, <laughs> congratulations on getting married as well, Stu. Have yeah, a fantastic cheers, day. Yeah, yeah all the best, Stu. Yeah, cheers, Mark. And, and enjoy your honeymoon. Uh, everybody, be. thank you so much for, for watching. Um, I'm going to get rid of these ugly mugs off the screen one by one. Just to finish Thanks, with... Oh, I'm, I'm bringing Mark back on. Mark, I didn't mean to bring you back on. It's not you that I want to bring back on. I want to bring on the yeah, North bro. Korean Wigan team. There it is. Enjoy it. The North Korean version of Wigan Rugby League. Enjoy the game on, on Thursday, and we'll be back next week to preview the whole game. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>